Welcome to part seven of our live training process here with our Drag Race Honda S2000. Now this tutorial, we're gonna be continuing on where we left off with in that last boost control tutorial, being able to dial in our boost control, making sure that our closed loop, open loop type of situation we're trying to work with here is gonna be functioning properly. And then we're gonna also turn on our bottom port control, our secondary three port control, to be able to try to turn up the boost even more and see what that process looks like. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so I sat here for a bit of time and I went through the data log a little bit further. And actually what I'm finding here is that we have an issue that we can address in two different ways in order to get it to track to our base wastegate duty cycle table. So let's go take a look at the data log here real quick. What I was noticing here as I was going through and taking a look, let's just kind of stretch some of these lanes out here just a little bit. What we're finding here if you pay attention to some of these details, is, all right, let's get our cursor here. We're gonna find we're in stage one pre-spool, and then that's running 30% duty cycle. That's what we've actually programmed here for the stage one duty cycles. That's used to try to spool the turbo up quicker. So we just left that at 30, just to keep things simple. Coming back in here to our data log, and now the other thing I wanna point out is that we've set this just to stage two. So there's stage two, three, Stage two is where it runs proportional derivative in the PID gains, and then stage three is where it runs proportional integral once it's at the target to try to hold and maintain to the target. So we set it to stage two because we only really want to run this simplified closed loop, open loop kind of hybrid method that I'm showing here. If we jump back into our log, what we're noticing here is that our stage two, we can see stage two is active. It's running right what we programmed into the table here, all the way up to a value here of 35% duty cycle. And that's about 75, 7,600. If we backtrack right to the table, that's exactly what we have here for a value at 35. Now what we're gonna find here is that as we were seeing, the duty cycle didn't continue to ramp up with RPM. We see at 35, 40, 42, 45. We're doing that to try to pick the boost up on the top end. If we go back here to the data log, what we're gonna find and this is something that I just realized right now because I haven't ran into this before, we can see that as soon as we enter into stage three active, which we haven't turned on, we don't have stage three active, but we're finding here that it's going to 34.5 and the duty cycle is just flatlining. It's not doing anything further. What we have to do is either one of two things. We need to let it go into stage three, and even though we zeroed out all the PID gains, it'll continue to feedback from the base wastegate table. If it's stuck here and it goes into stage three and we don't allow it to set it to stage two, three switch over, it's gonna go and just latch itself onto a value here and not actually follow the base wastegate duty cycle table. This is a software limitation. So what we're gonna to have to do here is just switch it over to stage two, three, not a big deal. And then that's gonna follow our duty cycle that we have in the table. So uh, right now it's showing me that the ECU is not online. Let me go ahead and it looks like I actually unplugged as I was trying to troubleshoot here. Let me go plug back in the box here real quick. So we go ahead and just take care of that and uh, we can continue on here. So should allow me to connect here. Allow that to search. We can see reconnecting to an ECU, but the settings are different. You wish to copy the PC settings at ECU and that's actually what we want to do here. So we'll click yes. We want to go ahead and update it with that two, three, stage two, three. So essentially we're allowed to go through the different stages. We have the PID gain zeroed out and that's gonna now allow it to track to the actual duty cycle request from our values. What I'm gonna do right now, and as I was mentioning before, I'm not gonna touch the timing. I'm gonna try to increase the boost a little bit. We're at 440 KPA right now. I'm gonna bump the target up to about 470 KPA. That should give us enough range. We have enough fuel there. If we go here to calculator, we can actually calculate what that's going to be in boost. So uh, as I was mentioning before, 470 KPA minus 100, that's atmospheric, it gives us 370 KPA. So the decimal place is over two, that's 3.7. Multiply 14.7 times 3.7, that's 54 pounds of boost. So we're going from roughly a 50, 50 to 51 PSI target to about 54. We could actually even go to 475 KPA, that'll bring us right about to that marker point. Let's go ahead and store that. Now what we're gonna do here is as we're going up here in the table, 440, 480, 500 KPA, we're gonna have to go and bring this duty cycle up just a little bit, just a tiny bit. I'm gonna go in here and add 5% duty cycle to my values. This should get it to spool up 
to that about 470, 480 KPA target, and then ramp the duty cycle here on the top end and hold to that level, hold to that boost target. So we'll have to see how this goes. We're gonna bump the boost up, we're not touching our timing, our fuel model looks good. I have to go and try it. Let's go ahead and store this to the ECU. I'm also gonna save the file right now. And we should see a power increase. I'm anticipating probably seeing another 100 horsepower out of upping the boost. I'm not gonna go much higher than this, even though we probably have more adjustability range out of the turbo uh, that requires us to go and increase the base the base uh, fuel pressure going up another 10, 15, 20 PSI base pressure. We probably could keep going with this, but we'll just, uh, this is a decent amount of boost. I wanted to get up to about 55, 60 pounds. So if we're right about there and we're still good on the fueling, we're gonna not gonna worry about uh, touching the base pressure. We can race it, figure out where we're at, and always adjust it as we need at another point in time. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.